Hi everybody, Josiah here, also known as Chilling Silence, and today I'm going to show you the change in testnet from Myriad Grostal to Odocrypt. So, I'm here in my Digibyte t-shirt, this is a Sunday afternoon, 1.30 in the afternoon. It's very fly by the seat of our pants in terms of me actually filming this and, and, and recording it, uh, but I was inspired by Kanan from the Vertcoin team, I thought this would be kind of cool to, to show people and give you a bit of an introduction into Autocrypt and uh, FPGAs and mining and things like that at the same time. So, uh, what we're going to do is up here we've got the mining pool software. Uh, and now this is basically a local, uh, I suppose, layer in between the Digibyte wallet, which you can see here. Oh, successfully acquired template. Hey, would you look at that? I think we've actually just gone and done it. So what we can see here is this is the this is the Digibyte wallet. Uh, now these are testnet coins. Don't worry. I'm actually I, I wish I had even a hundredth of that, but whatever. These are these are effectively worthless Digibyte testnet. You can see up here it's on the testnet. You can generate them uh, these particular coins uh, on the testnet with no mining hardware or anything like that. So they're they're basically worthless, uh, but they're needed in order to test things out. So let's have a quick look at what's going on here because, um, so we can see here successfully acquired template, that's pretty cool. So these, uh, I'll, I'll explain some of the windows and things about what's going on here. Now up the top left hand corner here, what we have is some software that runs and it automatically every 10 days on the main net will re create the software that's needed for the FPGAs and it will push them out to the FPGAs uh, and effectively kind of reflash them sort of like if you've ever flashed a, a cell phone for example or updated the firmware on an iPod um, so let me have a quick look here um, let's just see this I think we're actually I think that means that we are live now on the testnet so uh, I'll continue to kind of go through a little bit of, uh, about this. Um, I'm also talking with a few of the other developers and things about this. So if you see me kind of looking up and down and up and down, this is because we've got a laptop here with a computer monitor up here and recording off both of them. So anyway, uh, let me just go. This is pretty cool. We're actually we're, we're mining on, on Odocrypt. That was really good timing with uh, starting the stream, I suppose. So I'll, I'll continue to explain. So what this does is every 10 days on the main net or every 24 hours on the test net uh, it will go through and based on the seed uh, which is effectively time stamped it will recreate the uh, uh, algorithm for autocrypt now so what we can do is i'll show you here so what i've got is a couple of de10 nano uh, fpgas now this is showing here that it's uh, accepting all of these uh, different results and things like that uh, to the mining pool, which is running here. Uh, now I've started one for each individual uh, uh, miner, each individual FPGA. So I'll show you what that does. Basically this says uh, Quartus STP. It's going to flash the mine.tcl and it's going to send it to the particular piece of hardware on USB port 5. So that's what the DESOC 1-5 is. Um, so same over here. This is also a FPGA uh, DE10 Nano. This is on 1-6, which is the sixth USB port on this particular computer. Uh, down the bottom here, I've also got a couple of stopped. Uh, these are the Cyclone 5 ones, uh, and this one is on port 3, for example. So I'll kind of just show you what that looks like. Uh, I've been having a bit of problems with this one particular one down here. It's been giving me a little bit of issues, uh, but part of the course with uh, testing this out, we, we run into that kind of thing. Uh, what I'll actually do really quickly is I'll show you what they look like as well because that's always really cool to see. So if I bring up, I think I've got them still here. Yeah, I do. One, two, three. Let's bring these up. So what you can see here, this is the Cyclone 5 starter kit from Intel. Uh, this is the original FPGA that I purchased to test this out with. Uh, so you can see here, they're relatively off-the-shelf kind of hardware in terms of most of the uh, items that are on board with it. So we've got here a micro SD uh, card slot, we've got audio input, audio output, uh, HDMI, we've got two USB ports. Uh, this particular one doesn't have a network port, but we've got a bunch of other different dip switches and things like that. Uh, what we've got here is a nice little uh, overview of all of my FPGAs, so I have four different ones. 
Uh, now you can see on the right here they come with this protective shield on the top usually, but I've pulled them off these other one, two, three here just for uh, a little bit of testing and things. Um, and I'll show you the DE10. So these are the DE10 nanos, and if I flip back, so that's the Cyclone 5. Uh, so these DE10 nanos, they also include, uh, you can see down here we've got a network port on them, a couple of, uh, what are we, uh, micro USB and a nano? A mini USB and a micro USB, helps if I get that right, yep. Uh, and, and, and so they're, they're both effectively the same kind of hardware. Uh, so we have an Altera uh, Cyclone 5 um, SoC, and this is what does the FPGA mining. Now this is very different from an ASIC because an ASIC is an application-specific integrated circuit. Now the idea with this meaning that it is specifically doing just one thing and one thing alone, it doesn't do anything else aside from that one particular thing. Whereas FPGAs on the other hand are very fixable, that's what the FPGA stands for, Field Programmable Grid Array. So Field Programmable basically meaning you can be effectively out on the field or in the real world and you can program it live as you go along. So they're not locked in doing just one thing. Now when you purchase these they come with a bunch of different uh, leaflets and things that kind of show you these FPGAs being used in smart cars or in microwaves and a whole bunch of things like that. In this instance we're going to be using them for mining uh, Digibyte. So what I'll do is I will bring this down now and so we can see here it's saying uh, result accepted so this is pretty cool it's still uh, working away there that's fantastic. So let me have a look here. Where are we at? So I've just mined a whole bunch of blocks, apparently. Let's go to the debug window, get blockchain. This is so crazy being delayed being across the network. Get blockchain info. All right, autocrypt, status equals active. Start time timeout, awesome. Uh, we're also with SegWit, SegWit's active, inversion bips, right. Isn't that bits? I thought it was bits. Anyway, uh, let's scroll up and find out a little bit more about this. We'll keep going up. SegWit, here we go. Alright, so we have independent difficulties for each of these. This is awesome to see. I'll leave this continuing to mine. Let's have a bit of a look here. So anyway, the idea behind this is that we want it to be as accessible for as many people as possible. So these are relatively off-the-shelf hardware, like I mentioned. Actually, let's just quickly I'll bring that back up. So these are, now these are dedicated pieces of hardware at the moment for mining. So you can see I've got power and I've got USB going to a computer. But the idea being that one of these will cost you, let's say ballpark 150 to 200 US dollars. Now you can get slightly more powerful ones, but these are not uh, like ASICs where they are manufactured by a single individual company that effectively has a monopoly on the, the whole industry. Let me just have some water here. So these are relatively commodity pieces of uh, hardware in, in, in that anybody can use them for an array of different things. Uh, so hopefully we're also going to entice more people to potentially be mining. Uh, but in addition, we want people to be able to mine solo. So one of the things that I'm going to be doing once we've finished up here is writing up some guides and some information on how to mine and how to use, uh, how to use the FPGAs, how to get started with them. In fact, what I should even do, let's let's go show you if we go to DGB Wiki. I've slowly been populating some of the information here under AutoCrypt. There's not a lot of information, um, but I've gone specifically and gone and put in here uh, choosing some of the hardware. So I've got links to where you can go and actually purchase some of these. 
Uh, now we do have uh, members of the community who are already looking to implement this on the Cyclone 4 uh, chipsets. Now keep in mind you can't just go out and buy any specific FPGA, you have to have it programmed uh, specifically for it. So if you are not a technical person I would recommend specifically you start with these ones that you can see on the screen here. Um, rather than going out and just buying something that's potentially more expensive which you're not going to be able to program yourself or use yourself. Um, we can also go back here, I've got a little bit of FPGA mining, oh, I did put some information in there, cool. More information to be added, that's kind of the, the key part there. <laughs> so so I'm working on it, I'm working on putting more information in there, um, overview about it, it uses the Kitchak SHA-3 algorithm. Um, so, so keep checking back there if you are interested, you can go out and purchase, I mean obviously this is something that I'm doing um, now, I am mining with the DE10 Nano and the Cyclone 5 starter kit, so you can go out and get yourself one of these if you want. Um, and, and there's a very high chance I suppose given the fact that I've, I've been using them myself to test that come time for it to be actually uh, pushed to mainnet that we will see it um, actually supported. Um, what I'll do, let's go back here, let's see what this uh, mining is up to. Let's have a bit of a nosy. Let's bring up the debug menu. Let's go list transactions and see if it's going to give me all of the recent stuff. Because I should have some blocks showing up there. I think there's a... I think it was 400 from mainnet or 100 from mainnet, maybe it's only 40, let me have a look. Category, receive, rich testnet, uh, confirmations, that's a lot of confirmations, so I feel like that's not it. Anyway, that should show up soon in the wallet, so uh, again keep in mind this is a testnet wallet, what I'm mining is effectively completely worthless. They're not worth anything at all, um, but I'm, I'm basically doing the mining to uh, simulate the real network, and that's what the testnet is all about. So what we're also going to see real soon is we're going to see more information coming out about Digi assets and the ability for people to issue these assets on the testnet uh, before we go and put it out onto the mainnet. But more specifically, so this is, this is me effectively supporting the testnet and helping other people to develop on it because they still need the box to be mined. Um, and so that's what we're going to see here happening with this. Uh, so the, yeah, what I'll do is I, I think I'll, I'll wrap this up. Um, it's been it's been interesting. I'm glad we kind of we caught that um, happening. Uh, I thought it was going to happen around right about that time. So that's really exciting to see. We're going to have more information coming out soon. Keep your eye both on dgbwiki.com. Uh, follow us on Blockfolio Signal for news updates and things like that. Uh, you can follow me specifically at dgb underscore chilling uh, on. Uh, Twitter, or you can also follow, oh, what have we got happening in here? Oh, just the results accepted. Or you can follow uh, at DigibyteCoin on Twitter as well. So again, we the idea behind this AutoCrypt and behind FPGAs, we want this to be in the hands of as many people as possible, who are going to hopefully help uh, aid even further and, and, and further strengthen the decentralization process um, and, and allow more people to contribute uh, in a decentralized manner to the Digibyte network. So this is really exciting. Uh, hey, look, if you've enjoyed this, um, give it a like down below, share the video, tell your friends and family and all that sort of juicy stuff. But uh, more specifically, I hope that uh, this has been educational. I hope you've learned a thing or two. Uh, if you do have questions, feel free to leave them below and I will try and answer them uh, or on Twitter. Otherwise, jump on Telegram if you want to start liaising with the developers. Uh, that is at digibyte devs, oh, sorry, t.me forward slash digibyte devs uh, should get you uh, into the Telegram channel. Uh, so I'll, uh, I'll talk to everybody in the next video. Thanks for your time.